Good evening, Thief River Falls. Oh, yes, indeed. We're back again. Well, you know, last week we had a little snowstorm, but now the Tuesday night experiment is live and on your radio airwaves for two great hours here. A Pioneer 90.1 Radio Northland.org. I'm your host on the hippest trip in America, Glenn Broggett. Yeah. And with me, as usual, my uh, steady two here, the, uh, the ultimate uh, experiment. We're talking about Blind Dog, one of my boys. How you doing? Yo, what up, man? Where's my microphone there? Check one, two. Hello, hello. Pop I'm giving up. you a little yeah, cranked yeah, up. Yeah. There we go. Cranked Can up and ready to go. get more volume on there? All right, we're going to give you a little volume okay, on this. Okay, yeah. All right, All we're right. working. We're working loud and proud. Do I, okay, yeah. There we go. I don't know if so we got some new equipment in the studio here. They haven't put it in yet, but... We're definitely... We'll take sound it. hip. Taking a step in the right direction here on the Tuesday Night Experiment. Last week, uh, yeah, I, I gave you a call to say, hey, uh, it's just too awful around the area. And you yeah. uh, you basically, you know, there was probably a big old uh, drift on your front door. I know, man. You know, she said, like, <laughs> that, that last storm, I actually went out and did some shoveling. And I wanted to do a whole straight path, right? Yeah. Well, I started off shoveling, and it looked all good, man. But by the time I got done, it veered off to the right a little bit all the way to the street. So I don't know how, you know, how does that work, man? I really don't know, because, uh, I, I mean, this The joys summer, of having a first house, you know. I, I'm hearing you, too. I mean, I had to do some, some major snow blowing in my yard. and Oh, yeah. Oh, there was a lot of uh, lot of colorful language last, last uh, oh, Tuesday. Yeah, it's, Kind of like that grumpier old man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't look forward to this time of year. I never have and I never will. But I do uh, want to say welcome, my friend. It's glad to have you. Glad to have you here, buddy. Yeah, thanks, man. And, you know, we got to also introduce the second man in charge here. Guy who was, like, ready to go last week, and I had to tell him, <laughs> hey, pal, we're not doing it tonight. And he, he ended up going out driving around and getting his ass stuck. <laughs> I'm talking about Sugar Sean Slauson. <laughs> The only guy I know that cruises around with schnappers and gets stuck. Well, you know, the, fu- <laughs> the funny thing about it, you know, Glenn, Glenn told me to calm down and have some dip. But, you know, I, I said, you know what, I'm going to go out driving around. I made a YouTube video getting stuck in the snow and had to show the whole uh You're that guy storm. that posts that stuff on YouTube, man. Oh, yeah, I'm a YouTube guy. I- yeah. If you haven't figured it out already. No, really, you're the guy that <clears throat> posts, I know the other year I watched one. And someone's got, like, uh, cruising in a storm in Thief River Falls, and all they're doing is just heading down the double lanes, <laughs> rolling by T-59, and up that way, turns around in uh, the, uh, what is that, Tesoro out there? Yeah. Wheels back the other way, and I was like, huh, wonder who did that. Well, I've got sure a lot of time on their hands. I'm sure there's other a people that do YouTube besides I do. But I like the camera work. It was nice and uh, steady. Yeah. 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 Not no, too my, bumpy. Mine was that night. He laid oh. off the hot brandy until he got <laughs> home. <laughs> until he got stopped by the cops, you know, by the popo. You know, that's what we call it. <laughs> yeah, I, I basically told Sugar Sean to stay home, but you know, being the fool that he is, he had to go out and drive around and see what and he could see. At the same time, yeah. right? oh, I boy. challenged myself a lot. People right? get stranded that way. Yeah, man. You know, you're just creating somebody. You're creating a whole bunch of burden for somebody. I was creating magic. Ma- movie magic. What do you call? Do you have a winter survival kit, that bad boy. I have a camera. <laughs> What the heck? How long have you been living up here? Are you from Florida? Well, now that I live in town now, I yeah. don't have to worry about all that crap. Yeah. you got to oh, always have something in there, a bottle of scotch or vodka. You know, you, you don't have a, nice if you don't have a St. Bernard, you basically got to carry your own booze. That's right. <laughs> or a nice lady. I don't know. Anyway. Well, we, we, uh, we were gone a week. I guess we're all really full flavored, ready to roll tonight here. We got three guests again this week on the show. I uh, we did I did a couple of interviews uh you know in you know in the days leading up to this uh fine little show and yeah. tonight we're going to be welcoming uh oh one of the greatest guys as far as funny songs go Red Peters is coming in the eight o'clock hour yeah he's got a holiday song a duet he did with Margaret Cho a comedian <laughs> who's uh, kind of making some headlines here recently so uh ladies don't be stuck up. <laughs> Blind dog's looking out the window. And that's a jan. Oh. That's a, that's our favorite there, right there. Yeah, here's yeah, our, there's our boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's Corey. the janitor. He's, like, he's walking around stalking those two ladies who just he's, walked by. He's just staring at us. Yeah. Yeah. Red, Red Peter's coming up in the eight o'clock hour around eight fifteen. Uh, later on, Andrew Erlis. Uh, he's an author of a great book on a Minneapolis-based uh, alt rock group called Husker Du. Oh hey, I'm, I 
I know those guys. From right on. Bob Mould and Grant Hart and Company. He wrote a nice book about it. Were they from it. Minneapolis? Yeah, they were uh, in the Minneapolis area, yeah, late, late right 1970s on. uh, into the early 80s. Uh, they did have, uh, they were on a mainstream label very briefly before yeah. they broke up. Well, he's going to tell us a little bit about his book uh, called Husker Du, the story of the noise pop pioneers nice. who launched modern rock. Sugar Sean, you got a look of, you're, you're baffled. Uh, what's the deal? I mean, you haven't heard of Husker Du? The only Minnesota band I've heard of is Lil Bobby and the Storm, I tell you. <laughs> no, I don't oh, know. Oh, man. I, we covered that last time, didn't we? Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, right, right. I've never heard of these guys before. To well, be with you. who's screwed you, man? Time it's to stupid. open up the barn door and walk out and embrace the world. We yeah. got something so, for you. I guess so. And at 7.30 tonight, uh, we're going to play my interview, my recent interview with uh, rocker Tommy James, legendary rocker. Cool. He, of course, had many hits with the Shondells, over 100 million Record sold. Dragon the Line. <laughs> oh, yeah. Crystal Blue Persuasion. Yeah. A little Crimson and Clover. Oh, man. Uh, now you're you're I, giving me flashbacks <laughs> of my days at the oldies station. I told some people, I told some people about uh, the, that interview, and I, I hope there'll be a few people listening uh, that uh, I work with. Anyway, are, these the, are these the ones that uh, go on your little uh, YouTube say, well, uh, site no, and say, no, no. You better leave, they better leave you alone, <laughs> Sugar Sean. Well, besides the YouTube and Facebook It's all crowd, his buddies from his support group, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told a, <laughs> see, I told a couple people at Hugo's that, uh, that you were going to be interviewing uh, Tommy James, and they're looking forward to it. Some older people that work at Hugo's, so... Oh, that, yeah? That, that know all his uh, catalog and everything. Well, so. that's awful darn nice for you to yeah. get the good word out no about uh, the big interview. Nice. It would be the ultimate badass store if they played the interview while it was going live in the store. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, how come you haven't used your stroke there, Magic I Man? Know, I, I, <laughs> I'm so oh, burnt out on the Christmas music already. You know, oh, oh. I don't they play cool stuff like well, we uh, got Santa one. Claus and his old lady. <laughs> well, you know, we got uh, we got Red Peters tonight. Oh, yeah. there you go. That should be great. That's all the Christmas gift I need for this this season, man. Yeah, and instead I think, of that lump of coal, I'm I'm going for some holiday music. And before the end of the show tonight, I'm gonna have an announcement about next week's big interview guest. Nice. Uh, I'm not gonna tell yeah, you now, yeah, Jack. Is it a big surprise? Yet. Well, it'll, it'll be the surprise to the listeners. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we get a little behind the scenes, uh, uh, creative <laughs> meeting. You're gonna bring it up there. Uh, we're gonna be talking to Joseph. Him and his wife Mary are gonna be about to give him birth uh, here oh. on the 25th. Oh, all right. Well, wow. Exclusive interview with Joseph tonight. Oh, cool. For next week, actually. Sorry. That looks. I can't wait to hear that one. <laughs> you know, I found this list. I was going to uh, do this last week, but of course, due to undue circumstances. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that I didn't want to get off my ass and come over here. No, no, it's, it's oh. no storm, no storm. No, I, I got this list, and I'm, I'm going to start in here. It's uh, I'm going to start off with this little thing, little intro they got for us. Criminally underappreciated yet darn near ubiquitous in some of yeah ubiquitous. That's a million dollar hey. word, isn't it? And I, and I, and I said, of the day. Woo! <laughs> Every time I say ubiquitous, what do you do? You scream real loud. Like Pee yeah, Pee Wee's uh, Playhouse. Uh, well, thanks for the uh, reference there, You're Captain welcome. Obvious. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> near, uh. Yet uh, darn near ubiquitous in some of the greatest rock and roll songs ever recorded. Today is the day. Tuesday night experiment, gang. We celebrate a musical instrument first developed to assist herdsmen in keeping track of their wayward future Big Macs and Whoppers. I'm talking about the cowbell. Oh, Yo. If I had a cowbell here, I'd be hitting it right now. That's right. Knock on Sean's noggin a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> first, of, first appearing in uh, American Mountain and Hillbilly music back in the 1920s, the cowbell really started gaining traction during the 1960s as the psychedelic movement embraced all forms of musical and other experimentation. Today, we honor the top ten cowbell songs. And we're going to do this. We'll play a little brief snippets of these uh, top ten songs. I've managed to gather all ten of them. Oh, wow. I, I, we I've only had, one, what, almost system? two weeks to do this oh, here. Of course, hey. yeah. Yeah. I nailed it. Okay. <laughs> In at number ten, Kings of Leon with Red Morning Light. Let's hear this one. See, I guess it, it, it's going to not kick in right away. No, you got to wait for it. For a a wonder, take it oh, there you go. I think I hear it. <laughs> I think it's coming up here. No, we're, wait, we're waiting until we hear Cowbell. 